There's levels to friendships. I mean, you could have known your homie since you were two years old. You could have lived together. I mean, you could have survived the whole zombie apocalypse together. But shit, the truth is, you haven't truly experienced brotherhood until you and your homie have participated in a two-man mission like just look at kobe and shaq man that type of chemistry can only be achieved by running a two man shit i bet these motherfuckers were running two mans every night and you already know kobe was laying down that mamba mentality while shaq had his girl oh kneeling but for those of you who may be wondering chains what the hell is a two man mission well i'm glad you asked it's quite simple really it's when you're gonna link with a girl but you bring your homie and she brings her homie and what this does is it sets an environment when you and your homie me can dribble, pass, alley-oop, and ideally dunk that shit. Now don't get me wrong, it's simple, but not easy. I remember my first two-man mission like it was yesterday. It took place when I was in grade seven. And it started when my friend Joe hit me up like, yo bro, I'm going to this girl Sophie's house and her friend Ava's there. You, you trying to pull up? And I was like, am I trying to pull up? Hell yeah, I'm trying to pull up. So we show up to her house and I'm new to this whole thing. So I'm sitting there like, ah, so what? Uh, what now? We, we could watch a scary movie. Yeah, let's do it. I'm down. Uh, well, actually, uh, personally, I'm not a big fan of scary movies. Man, shut the fuck. So we're watching a scary movie. And to be honest with you, it was simply the best scary movie I'd ever seen in my entire life. So I was really getting invested in this plot. And Ava's like, oh my God, I'm scared. <laughs> and that shit went way over my head. Well, why? It's not even at the scary part yet. And then only 30 minutes into the movie, Joe and Sophie are like, Yo, we'll be right back. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, do you guys want me to pause the movie? <laughs> nah, it's all good, bro. And you see, what Joe just did right there was a calculated move. In basketball terms, he just said an ISO. So now it was two 1v1s. And the situation was absolutely perfect, but the problem was... I actually like the fucking movie. And that violates rule number three in section seven of how to pull off a successful two man never give a fuck about the movie because the truth is the movie length is like the shot clock if you end up actually watching the entire movie you failed the mission but i had no clue and to be honest I, I didn't even know what a two man was at the time so i got some popcorn and i was just watching the movie but when the climax of the movie was about to come around i did something that violated every term and agreement of the two man mission i went over to joe and sophie like like, hey, hey guys, quick, you're gonna miss the best pro- Oh, fuck. And I missed the climax of the movie, but shit, I seen a climax. And needless to say, Joe never invited me to a two-man mission since. But you know I had to redeem myself, even if it was three years later when I was in grade 10. It was a Saturday night, and me and Bob were looking for something to do. And I'm gonna keep it a stack with you, bro. I had no motion. Like, my Snapchat was drier than a Popeye's biscuit, bro. But lucky for me, Bob had a roster. And I'm talking an all-star lineup of girls who just want bob on their body and i don't blame them i mean shit i got bob on my body right now and you can too at chainsclub.shop that's right we got hoodies shirts beanies socks keychains stickers you name it and starting at the price of 420 bob can be all yours <laughs> or if you want me I, I wouldn't mind being on your keychain or something. <laughs> Treat me like white tea. So as I was saying, me and Bob were bored. So Bob hits up this girl named Avery like, what are you doing right now? And she's like, just chilling. Who you with? My friend Alice. Let's link. I'm with my homie. Okay, is he cute? cute as hell okay come over and i'm excited as fuck so we get bob's sister to drive us to avery's crib and as we pull up to her house i remember a crucial detail that i'd been forgetting this whole time i I was scared of the hoes, bruh. And as we walked up to her door, I was starting to get flashbacks of me and Joe's two man, where Joe tossed up an alley oop for both of us, and I blocked his shot, metaphorically and literally. And as I'm psyching myself up, Bob calls Avery to tell her we're here, and she's like, So, uh, my, my parents are asleep, so you're gonna have to come in through my window. Shit. So we walk around the side of the house to Avery's room, and lucky for us, there's this big ass window, and I'm like, Yo, can you open it so we can get in? And she's like, 
Uh, it, it is open. Bro, only this tiny ass rectangle in the top left was open at a 60 degree angle. But that was our only way in, so I helped Bob up and through the window. But now I gotta get up there, and I'm bigger than Bob. So I put my head through, and I'm trying to slowly creep into the room. And then I lean just a little too far, and I'm headed face first onto Alice's hardwood floor. And listen, Bob has come in clutch many times. He saved me from drowning, coyotes, getting in trouble. But out of all these things i'm most grateful for bob catching me as i fell through this fucking window because drowning and dying would have been pretty bad like boohoo rip chains you know what i'm saying but imagine falling through a window and eating shit face first in front of the hose like i would have preferred the drowning bro but after that close call I, I was a little flabbergasted you know what i'm saying but alice has the audacity to ask me this loaded ass question like oh hey wh what's your name uh me yeah you uh it's a uh, the name's for real. Chains for real. Nice to meet you, Mr. For Real. I'm Alice. And so we all just started talking and shit, but I keep noticing Alice was getting a bunch of text messages. And I remember thinking it was probably her mom or something, so I shrugged that shit off, and I'm like, yo, we should watch a movie. Yeah, oh we should. God, yeah. And I wasn't about to make the same mistake I made last time. So I found the most dog shit horror movie on the face of Netflix and threw that shit on. And man, that shit was ass. In fact, it was so ass that we, we just started cuddling and shit. Like, what else was there to do? But now that we were close, I could feel the vibrations of Alice's phone getting a call. So she's like, one second, I'll be right back. And I wasn't trying to eavesdrop, but I could low-key hear what she was saying through the door. I'm just at Avery's house. We're watching a movie. Oh my god. Okay, that's fine. Okay. But when she comes back, she puts a pillow between us. Like the same type of shit two dudes do to make sure they don't fuck in their sleep. And I'm trying to piece everything together. And as I'm coming to the conclusion that this girl has a boyfriend, I hear footsteps coming towards the door. And when the door opens, I'm fucking bam boozled to see a 60 year old man who looks furious and i'm just hoping this isn't alice's boyfriend because if it is we got bigger problems on our hands but as i seen the way this man looked at bob i realized he's avery's dad and bob wasted no time jumping out that fucking window but for me let's just say that shit wasn't very elegant because i got stuck for what felt like five minutes making eye contact with this grown ass man well what are you what are you trying to seduce my dad or something like like get the fuck out and i'm not gonna lie we he ran bro and once we made it home me and bob were relieved but when i go to check my phone i got a little notification on snapchat and i'm expecting it to be alice or, or maybe even team snapchat or something i don't know but i sure as hell wasn't expecting it to be a motherfucker named ryan donaldson and ryan must have woke up on the wrong side of the bed this morning because he's like what the fuck did you do dude so i hit him back with a who this and he's like ryan donaldson yeah no i can see your username bro but i have no clue who you are I'm Alice's boyfriend, bitch. And Ryan got his shit hit with an instant block, bro. And so the moral of the story is, if you're gonna hang out with a girl who has a boyfriend, turn off your snap maps, bro. All right, I already touched on the unspeakable things that go down in the high school bathrooms, bro. But there's only one place on earth that is more foul than those bathrooms. And it's the goddamn locker rooms. That room smells like complete and utter dog shit mixed with Axe Spray. Like, maybe I just went to school with a whole lot of Discord mods, but the rancid smell of the boys' locker room would contaminate anything in a 50-foot radius. And shit, Lord knows what goes down in that questionable place. Like, you'll walk in there and see anything, bro. Motherfuckers will be having fights, chicken fights, group fights, sword fights. Like, any laws and rules simply don't apply to the boys' locker room. Motherfuckers will be throwing hands selling drugs, committing arson, committing several counts of fucking tax evasion shit you name it it's pretty much a gta lobby in that bitch like i remember one day i walked into pe and my teacher was like hey no uh uh where's your pe strip and i was like shit it's in the locker room so i walk into the locker room and there's just two motherfuckers throwing hands and they just stop and look at me like oh shit uh, I'm, I'm gonna just get my backpack and shit, so, yeah. Uh, Alright, y'all be safe. And then they just went back to beating the shit out of each other. Now listen, I don't spend too much time in the girls' locker room, but anytime I walk by there... <laughs> That shit smells like rose petals and rainbows. So I can only imagine there's no group fights, no chicken fights. 
Uh, hopefully no fucking sword fights. And bro, you dead ass can't leave shit in the locker room. Like if you leave anything not locked up, it's gone. These kids are ruthless, bro. They're snatching your wallet, your phone, your clothes. Shit, they're taking your PB&J sandwich. And the thing is, if you want your PB&J back, you're gonna have to get it back in blood because there's no laws in the locker room. See, if someone snatched my sandwich in math class, I'm turning into 6'9", bro. <clears throat> Mr. Cumminson, uh, J Jordan Johnson here who lives on 123 Stickman Drive, postal code STK53Z, just stole my peanut butter and jelly sandwich my mom made me, so... I'ma need his ass suspended. But if you try to tell a teacher about anything that happened in the locker rooms... They don't give a fuck. M Mr. Principal, uh, Jordan Johnson just stabbed me and stole my backpack, my phone, my wallet, and my ID. Damn, uh, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, where did this happen? It was in the locker room after PE. Oh, you said the locker room? <laughs> You're just gonna have to get it back in blood. B b b b b b back in blood? What, what are you talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna lie. The way you're snitching right now, uh, you kind of look like a bitch. But yo, one time me, Billy, and Bob were coming back to the locker room after some good old dodgeball, and Billy notices a dude rummaging through his backpack. So he's like, yo, yo, w what are you doing, bro? <laughs> but when he turned around, Billy was bamboozled to find out the kid rummaging through his bag he was special and there was just this moment of silence yo am i supposed to like like beat his ass right now or or bro i'm sure you didn't take anything just politely ask for your bag back all right yeah 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 oh uh hey man <laughs> can i get my bag back please and the kid just just hugged billy and then he left and i'm still confused to this day but i'm gonna be honest Locker rooms weren't all that bad. Cause sometimes you walk in that hole and they would just be throwing a party. Now it still smells like ass and there was literally no females, but it was still kind of lit. Like you'd walk in there and it would transform into the club. Shout out my label, that's me. I'm in this bitch with TP. I'm in this bitch with Ultra. Or you'll walk in there and th they'll just be giving out free pizza. Like, like walking into the locker room is a gamble. You might walk in there and get robbed or, or you'll get some fucking pizza. I don't know. But what I do know is there's only 10 types of dudes in the locker room. Starting with that one kid who must have thought it was the 1800s the way he was whipping motherfuckers. Next, we got the poor guy who's just trying to change. He's quiet. He's normal, and uh, he, he changes. It's a locker room, so it makes sense. Then we got that one poor soul who gets absolutely cooked by the entire locker room. Yo, why is Kevin built like Mike Wazowski? <laughs> Bro's got no neck. <laughs> We're stick men. None of us have neck. Shut up. You skip neck. Yeah, he skips oh. neck. Next, we got Bob. Bob's just that guy that casually takes his shirt off and he's built like Giga Chad. Like, shit. Fucking sexy ass Bob. <clears throat> and I don't know why, but there was always that one guy who thought it was a good idea to just, just whip his nuts out. Unprovoked. Uncalled for. Completely out of pocket. Like, what do you look like with your nuts out in a room with 30 half-naked sweaty dudes? Like, personally, in that situation, I'm keeping my balls in my boxers. Thank you very much. And bro, tell me why there was always one kid who was just dousing himself in axe spray. And it's always the mustiest motherfucker doing it, too. Like, who's gonna tell him that Axe Spray doesn't replace taking showers, bruh? And I don't know about your locker room, but for mine, there was always a dude eating. Like, out of all the places on Earth, why are you eating in the locker room? Like, for some reason, there's something about eating around a bunch of dudes in their boxers that just doesn't sit right with me. I mean, simply by bringing that sandwich into the locker room makes it contaminated. That sandwich will be tasting like wet dog and axe spray. And next, we got the kid who just makes as much noise as humanly possible. Shut the yeah, fuck shut the up. God, damn. And then there's that one dude who decides he's having a shower. And all power to that guy, but personally, 
there is no fucking way I'm showering in school. Like, I can't trust this little door to stop these menaces from breaking into my shower. Because remember, there's no laws in the locker room. Like, it's no jail, but... I'm sure if you drop the soap in there, you're gonna get violated. And of course you got the fiend. There's always a dude fiending for a vape in every locker room. And it's low key worse in the locker room than the bathrooms. Like these locker room fiends would do a little bit too much for some nicotine. I've seen them pay $5 for a single hit and fuck. I don't want to know what they'll do for a hit when they run out of money. And still, I'm not gonna lie, the high school bathrooms get wild. They'll be hotboxed, there'll be fight clubs, but the thing about the bathrooms is a teacher can walk in at any time and get every student suspended. Like even the poor kid taking a piss will probably get suspended just by association. Which is exactly why the high school locker rooms get so fucking rowdy. Because there's truly no teacher strong enough to stop the buffoonery that goes on in these locker rooms. So they don't even try. Shit, I don't care if your teacher is John Cena. There is no single man who can put a stop to the fuck shit that goes down in the locker rooms. But there is one thing that can a female five four three two one happy, happy new, new year, year. oh Woo-hoo. my god yeah. yeah yeah let's go for for my new year's resolution i'm gonna go on a diet nice. oh oh and i'm gonna quit vaping let's yeah. do it. oh and uh I- i'm gonna go vegan oh, nice. yeah. i'm gonna stop beating mommy oh, oh. three days later <laughs> Man, fuck the diet. Right? I didn't even want to go vegan anyways. Wait, 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 guys. What? Where's Jonathan? <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna keep it a stack. This New Year's resolution thing is a whole lot of bullshit. Some goddamn buffoonery. A heaping pile of... A fucking horse cut. Like, don't get me started on these new year, new me, motherfuckers, man. Like, dyeing your hair and getting another piercing doesn't change shit. Now you're just broke, depressed, and lonely in a different font. And I'm not gonna pretend like I don't see you motherfuckers in the gym for the first two weeks. Like, come on now. You and I both know as soon as you get out of this gym, you're about to pick up a large strawberry milkshake, a Big Mac with no pickles, and a side of chicken nuggets and it's disgusting but 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 chains how do you know down to the exact specifications of the order cuz shit I'm about to get the same damn thing because the devastating truth is a new year doesn't change jack shit and if you're watching this in 2022 I'm really not trying to kill the hopes and dreams of 2023 but let's be honest if you really wanted to be jacked you would start working out bro like I hate to be the bearer of bad news but the earth orbiting the sun one more time isn't gonna get you any bitches bro because <clears throat> trust me <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I would know. Now, as a stick man like myself, I can't fuck with New Year's resolutions because it's always the same shit. Like three, two, one, Happy New Year's. <laughs> oh, hey man, uh, Happy New Year's. Uh, well, what's your New Year's resolution? Oh, it's a, uh, it's 1080p. What about you? Oh yeah, same, same. But, 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 did you see Ethan, bro? Nah, what's his? Yo, he's got 4K. Yo, what's up, dudes? Oh, look at the quality on this guy. Damn, what? Wait, do you, do you hear that noise? Yeah, wh- what is that? Oh, shit, it's Chains. He, he got 480p again. Shit. Damn, that whole New Year's resolution bit was unfunny as fuck. Like, corny as shit. Well, speaking of corny jokes, New Year seems like the time when motherfuckers feel like it's okay to start whipping out the most Ten, overused nine, and unfunniest eight, jokes seven, of all six, time. Five, oh, four, oh, hey, Chains, uh, three, oh, well, watch two, this. One. Happy New Year. <laughs> oh, oh, uh, uh, hey, Chains, uh, I, I haven't seen you since last year. <laughs> So you know how it's going to be 2020 soon, right? Yeah, w- what about it? Well, I got 2020 vision. Now, I know it sounds like I'm on some bahumbug shit, but New Year's does have a lot of great things about it. Like the parties, the the fireworks, the uh, the uh, uh, 
the parties. And so you may be thinking, Chains, why are you like the Grinch of New Year's resolutions? Why do you hate New Year's resolutions so much? Well, the, the truth is my hatred for New Year's resolutions dates way, way, way back to 2016. It was December 31st. New Year's Eve, 11.59 p.m. This was the very day when a young hopeful Chains decided my New Year's resolution would be to acquire a girlfriend. I tried and I tried, but as 2022 comes to an end, my girlfriend remains unacquired. Oh, fuck. Oh, Halloween is the spookiest time of the year. Everywhere you look, it's vampires, killer clowns, old dudes in white vans trying to steal some children, which are all very scary things, especially killer clowns. But none of these spooky things scare me more than my worst fear. Going to jail, dropping the soap, and getting my booty snatched up. Now that's some real spooky shit right there. And I know some people are going to be thinking, oh, that's just a myth. It's a stereotype. Nobody actually gets their booty snatched up for dropping some soap but when it comes to my booty i don't want to fuck around and i sure as hell don't want to find out but everyone knows drinking can heavily influence your judgment and on one specific day my judgment was affected and i found myself fucking around and everyone knows what the chart depicts the more you fuck around the more you find out this story takes place in grade 10 it was a crisp halloween night the houses were decorated the leaves had fallen and the jack Jackos were lanterned, and as me and Billy walked down to the homie Bob's crib, we could pretty much smell that Halloween spirit. And when we knocked on Bob's door, we were surprised the homie Bob didn't open the door. It was Bob the Builder. Dude was fully suited up from head to toe. And when me and Billy seen that, we already knew we needed some costumes. So we go to Bob's closet and come out absolutely dripping into Mario and Luigi costumes, mustache and everything. But now that we undeniably had that shit on we still had yet to find something to do but lucky for us the night was still young so we got to brainstorming all right it's halloween bro we, we gotta do something yeah let's go find a party bet let me check where they're at mm -hmm. okay y yeah there's no parties bro fuck I, I mean we could trick or treat shit we might have to bro and just as three 15 year olds decided we would knock on strangers doors asking for candy our halloween was looking grim and not in a good way. But you know what they say. Can we fix it? Yes, we can. Because Bob pulls through and sets up a goddamn three-man mission. And just like that, Halloween goes from an L to a W night. And I thought the homies and I couldn't get more hype, that is, until Bob pulls out a bottle of Hennessy. And you would have thought Peach took the kids the way I was abusing that bottle. And we passed it around until we were all tipsy. Then we started walking to Chloe's house for the little Halloween three man. And it was already 9 p.m. at this point. So we're walking through the neighborhood admiring these decorations when we see the creepiest house of them all. It was Chloe's crib. So we walk through a whole graveyard just to knock on the door. And Chloe opens it looking like a whole angel. I, I mean, like, like literally, like she had the halo and the, the, the wings and shit. So we go up to her room where her two friends Lucy and Mia were and we sit on her bed and I'm not gonna lie it was a little awkward bro I was sitting there with my Mario fit my little mustache like so uh uh, uh Chloe why'd you choose to be an angel uh I don't know I just liked it uh why'd you choose to be Mario shit uh you know uh mama mia am I right <laughs> shit Fuck. Then Chloe whips out some tequila and all of a sudden we're playing drinking games and shit. But honestly, I, I was just trying to get drunk. So it'd be like, haha, drink up. Oh no. All right, it's your turn. W wait, you're, you're supposed to get it in my cup. What the fuck? And after purposely selling multiple games of tequila pong, I was feeling what some would call completely and utterly drunk as fuck and next thing i know we're playing spin the bottle and i was up so i spin the bottle and it spins and spins and lands on chloe and in my head i'm thinking and just as mario's about to get some peaches we hear the door open downstairs and chloe's like oh shit my parents are home hide so me and the homies run into her closet with a bottle of tequila and we can hear her dad come into the room hey what's going on up here oh you know we're, ju we're just watching scary movies all right uh, i'll be downstairs watching tv let me know if you need anything thanks dad and once her dad went downstairs we all came out of the cl 
we a we exited the closet and Chloe said, you guys gotta sneak out through the front door. J just be super quiet. And so we creep down the stairs and peek around the corner and Chloe's parents are right there with a clear sight of the door. So we know what we have to do. We take a shot for good measure and then run to the door. And my drunk ass couldn't even figure out how to unlock this fucking door. Hey, who is that? Uh, uh, it, uh, it's a me, a Mario. Then we ran out that joint and we didn't stop running until I got a call from one of my homies named Dave. He was like, yo, what are you doing right now? Oh, no nothing really. Just drunk as hell running from Chloe's angry ass dad. Yo, that's what's up. Come link me and Joe at Stickman Elementary. And we had nothing else to do, so we pull up. And it's Dave, Dave's girlfriend, Joe, and Joe's girlfriend. And they got some couples costumes going, but I couldn't help but notice Dave and Joe were shistied up. What are you? If the Simpsons grew up in Chicago? <laughs> nah, I'm just Homer. Yeah, but I mean, Homer doesn't usually wear a fucking ski mask. Oh, yeah, yeah, no. I just wore this because we graffiti the hell out of this school. What? Joe was here and Dave was too? Bro, what the fuck were you thinking? W what? Oh, you want me to include your name too? No, 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 hell no. And just as we become guilty by association, four cop cars come zooming down the street. Oh shit, it's the cops, run! And the cops hop out of their cars and start running at us with flashlights. So we head for the forest, but to get to the forest, we had to run across this long ass muddy field. And in the middle of this field, there was a huge pothole. And how did I know that? Because I seen Marge absolutely eat shit right in front of me. And don't get me wrong, I was absolutely plastered but as the cops got closer and closer i could practically see myself getting caught and dropping the soap and you know i wasn't gonna let that happen and so with all that adrenaline i mario jumped that fucking pothole and hauled ass into the forest and right when you get into the forest there was this deep creek with a log going across it but when i look back i see the cops flashlight getting brighter and brighter so i say fuck it and take a run at this log i get a good two steps and then my drunk ass slips boom right into the muddy creek but i I don't have time to give a single fuck so i run through this waist high muddy water and then we regroup and check who made it i see bob joe dave and dave's girl y yo where the fuck is billy no where's my girlfriend bro oh she ate shit a few yards back whoa, wait 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 what is, is she okay did she get whoa, wait, caught shut up billy's calling yo where are you I i'm hiding behind a tree right now in the middle of the field. The, the cops are looking for me. I bet we're coming. I gotta go. Fuck no, bro. If you go, you're gonna get caught. Listen, bro. I have to. He, he's the Luigi to my Mario. So I go back in to save Billy and my main man, Bob, comes with me. So we get to the edge of the forest and see Billy absolutely shitting his pants trying to hide from these cops, but they keep getting closer and closer. So Bob turns on his flashlight and both cops look at him. He's right there. Get over here. And while the cops were looking for Bob, me and Billy both run for the street and we ran and ran but once we were at least five blocks away we text bob like bro we both made it are you good and bob's like so Bob makes it out of the forest and we all link up. And we take a moment to appreciate the fact that none of us went to jail. And more importantly, none of us got our booty snatched up. And after our moment of appreciation, we were like, yo, maybe we should have just went trick-or-treating. Yeah, bro, some Reese's Pieces would hit right now. Mm. I mean, it's not too late to buy some candy. So we all go to the store and cop the biggest packs of candy we could find. Then we walked back to Bob's crib and enjoyed the rest of our night while fucking up some house. Halloween candy. High school. High school. The only place you'll find nerds and jocks chilling in the same room. Where there's fight clubs and book clubs in the same building. Where you can find the plug selling something and the school thought giving dome all in the same bathroom. And surely one of the few places you can pursue your educational prowess and to get off that Benjamin <laughs> in the same institution. High school, man. Love it or hate it, it's quite the experience. And although every single person will have a different experience at high school there are some things you are guaranteed to encounter like the pe sweat the nerd that one strict ass teacher the teacher's pet the redditor the predator the chill teacher the plug the stoner that one motherfucker who walks like this the class clown the band kid the kid who just never shows up
the hot cheeto girl that one sexy ass kid who <laughs> you got all the girls and you know what i'm saying he, he was like super cool the bathroom fiend the oh my god i almost failed that test i did so bad oh shit same i got a 51 percent. what about you oh my god i only got a 98.5 the fighter the anime kid and the npcs every single one of these individuals make up the magical place we call high school you come into high school merely a young, innocent, and clueless child, but you leave even more clueless than before, bro. Like when we learned about pie and math class, my dumb ass thought I was in culinary arts for two goddamn weeks. And that is pie. Ch Chains, are you listening? Yeah, yeah, we're learning about pie. Mmm. Th then recite pie. Uh flour egg to some fucking blueberry like coming into high school as a freshman i was thinking i can use my high school experiences and knowledge to figure out what i'm gonna do in life then shit all of a sudden i'm graduated and my brain is filled to max capacity on bullshit so now that you're graduated wh what are you gonna do with your life uh the, the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. But one of the most majestic parts of high school is the bathrooms, bro. Like, it's a proven statistic that only 1 in 30 kids actually go to the bathroom to take a piss. And Lord knows what the other 29 are doing, bro. I mean, it could literally be anything from a secret fight club to a drug ring to a fucking Bible study. Like, nothing is out of the picture when it comes to high school bathrooms, bro. But the bathrooms are not the only place where some fuck shit goes down. Because you know high school students love to see fights so when there's the slightest hint of beef there's a motherfucker instigating that shit oh oh shit my bad bro nah it's all good don't worry yo personally i wouldn't take that shit bro what nah nah it, it's fine like, he he practically just called you a bitch wait wait really no it, it was an wait, accident wait what's that oh shit he, he just said he's smoking on your grandma's pack right now hey d don't be talking about gram grams like that ah shit but tell me why when some entertaining shit happens, I just happen to miss school that day. Like, I'll go every day of the month, but I get sick for one day? Damn, I I'm glad as fuck I'm not at school right now. Yo. Holy shit, Chains, where are you? Uh, I'm in my bed right now, why? Ooh. Jeremy and Tom are running the ones right now. Fuck, the, the one day I didn't go. Wait, wait, what's that in the background? Oh, shit, yeah. Uh, they got little Uzi performing at school today. What? N Uzi's at our school? Yeah, check it out. Yo. Oh, and they brought in Gordon Ramsay cooking up free lunch today as well. What? Oh, and I uh, almost forgot. Uh, Elon's pulling up and giving everyone what? Teslas. So no, what? no. Uh, I'll see you later, man. <laughs> but listen, high school is nothing like these movies painted out to be. Like, all these movies portray the same shit, where, where Victoria and her goon squad make fun of Ruby, and where, where Chad and the football team shove Arthur in a locker. Like, I've only seen a motherfucker get shoved into a locker once in my life, and to be honest, I, I couldn't even see much of it. I mean, it was pretty fucking dark in that locker, bro. But for real, in high school, you don't have to worry about some big body taking your lunch money or some football kid slapping the books out of your hand. The worst thing you'll encounter on your average day at school is your local redditor. I don't know how they do it, but somehow every joke they make is so unfunny that it just ruins my day, bro. Do you smell that? Yeah, Jeremy. That, that's what happens when you don't shower in two months. No, <laughs> it smells like sussy baka. <laughs> like among us <laughs> but not to confuse redditors with discord mods i mean they're pretty much the same thing but discord mods shower even less to be honest there is truly only one thing mustier than a discord mod and that's the cafeteria food bro i mean this food is completely and utterly ass like somehow these motherfuckers managed to get the food cold and the drinks warm like how the fuck does that shit happen and my high school would serve some daily specials and to be honest that shit was unidentifiable like you'd see this pile of mysterious substance and i'd ask the person who made it what it is like <clears throat> uh well what's the special today you're holding it right now dumbass no but but like what is it oh 
Uh, I don't fucking know. And my school refused to pay people to make good food. So they had students making all the food. So you'd be eating a burger and look up at the person making them. And they'd just be casually scratching their ass. And even with all this free labor, tell me how these motherfuckers have the audacity to be charging $6 for three chicken strips, bro. That's $2 for one small soggy piece of... S some shit that's probably not even chicken. I mean, that shit is a robbery. And speaking of robbery, the high school change rooms are shockingly similar to Detroit. And we all know, you can't have shit in Detroit. Like, if you leave anything not locked up, it's gone, bro. Your iPhone, gone. Five dollars, finessed. Two week old rotten sandwich someone's taking that shit and to be honest even if you lock that shit up it's still at high risk like, like let me paint the picture a little bit this is pj pj locks all his beloved belongings in his good old pe locker before heading to play some soccer after scoring a hat trick pj comes back to the change room to reacquire his belongings only to find out someone took pj's whole goddamn locker pj was devastated until he remembers, he can check the school's security cameras. Yeah, uh, take a look. Yeah, take that shit, take that. Yeah, wheel, wheel, wheel. PJ never got his shit back. Now, I don't know about your guys' high schools, but mine was equipped with security cameras everywhere, covering every square inch of the school. But... These cameras had the resolution of a, of a fucking toaster. Like, you could have a motherfucker commit a heinous crime. He could proceed to put his face in the camera, state his government name, address, and date of birth, and you would still have no clue who did it, bro. And of course... The teachers. Teachers have the ability to make or break your high school experience. So real quick, let me go over some of the teachers you will encounter in high school. The angry teacher. The chill teacher. The lazy ad teacher. The funny ad teacher. The teacher who doesn't know how to teach shit. Miss Kakinson. The teacher who wants to be the chill teacher, but shit just... It just doesn't work. That teacher that plays the videos all class. Cut. The gym teacher with several allegations. The weird science teacher. And the teacher who subscribed to Chains For Real. <laughs> wow. What a G. And that's high school in a nutshell. For most of my life, I've known how to swim. But by that, I mean if my life depended on it, I could swim from one place to another. I don't even know if swim is the right word. Like, if you saw me casually enjoying a little swim at the pool, you'd be like, D -d does he need help? Like, is he drowning? I mean, like, I did take swimming lessons, but I quit at level alligator, bro. I, I never even made it to level one. With that being said, this incident dates way back to when I was in grade four. We were going on a field trip, and of course, it's to the pool. But I'm not stressing. I, I know I safely passed level penguin, so I should be chilling. My whole class and I walk into the entrance of the pool, but before anyone was allowed in the pool, they asked everyone if they knew how to swim. And I thought, we're in grade four. There is no way somebody still doesn't know how to swim. And just as I presumed, nobody needed a life jacket. So me and the gang are swimming around, you know, jumping off the diving boards. Fun stuff for a grade four field trip. But after about an hour, my friends and I are just chilling in the deep end. And that's when I see a kid in my class named Ben on some floaty things coming in our direction. A little backstory about Ben, for as long as I can remember, this dude has been on my nuts. So when I saw this dude coming in my direction, I assumed he just wanted to say hi or something. But as he made his way towards me, I could tell he was struggling. So I swim over to help him out. Oh, hey, Ben. Uh, how are you? This kid jumps off the floaty thing onto me. And this man has the meanest grip on me. Pause. Well, this shit had to be some sort of attempted murder, bro, because he had me in a chokehold and his legs were wrapped around my arms. But they did not prepare me for this shit level alligator. So instantly I start sinking and I hit the bottom of the pool. Keep in mind, Ben is chilling on top of me with his head out of the water this whole time. So I jump off the bottom of the pool just enough to get my head out of the water for a few seconds. <gasps> ben, get off me. And when I look up, I see this dude Ben with the straightest face in the world. Like this motherfucker has no clue I'm out here fighting for my life. And he says in the most monotone voice, 
I can't swim. Ah, oh, hell nah. I'm trying to fight him off me, but keep in mind my arms are tied up. So I gather all the strength out of my skinny ass grade four legs and I jump just enough to get my head out of the water again. <gasps> Lifeguard, help. Oh, you guys, stop playing around in the pool. That's it. I I'm fucked. I'm dead. And out of sheer anger, I decide, fuck it. If I'm dying, you're dying with me. I duck as far as I can under the water so both me and Ben can't breathe. But I'm running out of air. I start to get lightheaded. Man, that's crazy. This is really how I die, huh? And just as I had lost hope, my main man Bob comes in on some Superman shit, pulls Ben off me, and swims me over to the shallow end. I cough up some water, but eventually I catch my breath. So that's the story of how I almost died. And it's also the story of why I owe my life to Bob. First dates have the potential to be magical, fantastical, romantical, a night you will never forget. But they also got the potential to be straight booty. I mean, first dates are just a gamble, bro, especially if it's from a dating app. Like, you could show up to your first date with a 5'4 blonde Tinder girl and end up finding out she's 5'9. And she's brunette. And she's a dude. I mean, first dates from dating apps is kind of like buying one of those SpongeBob popsicles from an ice cream truck. Like, you know it's not gonna look the same as the advertisement, but the question is, how fucked up can it really be? And let me just say, extremely fucked up. I'm talking massive buck teeth, eyes crossed with a bite taken out of it, and I'm not talking about the popsicles. And these are the exact reasons my very first date was not from Tinder. Also because I was in grade seven and uh, that, that would be illegal. And when I was in grade seven, I was 12, as, as most grade sevens were. And for whatever reason, me and my homies loved going to the mall after school, which was weird because we, we had no money. So after another successful day of walking around and being too broke to buy anything, we walked back to the bus terminal by the mall. And as we walked up to our bus stop, we see these two girls waiting there. And the closer we got, the more familiar these girls started looking until we realized one of them was in our class. And so we walk up to them like, yo, are, are you Kate? Oh shit, Billy Bob and Chains, <laughs> what's up? Oh, nothing much. <laughs> How are you guys doing? Oh, I'm good. Uh, th this is Jessica. She's new to our school. Uh, hi. <laughs> what's up? Hello, Jessica. Oh, what, what brings you guys to the mall? Oh, nothing much. Just uh, just walking around and not buying anything because we don't have any money. <laughs> Yo, us too. And so we all get on the bus and we're just talking and shit for a good 20 minutes until my stop comes up. So I'll pull the thingy, but before I get off the bus, I ask Jessica. Yo, Jessica, uh, do, do you Snapchat by any chance? Y yeah, I do. L let me add you. What's your snap name? And I remember I had some shitty ass username like, oh shit, it's um... MLG Pro No Scoper Illuminati Confirmed. Yo, kid, get the fuck off the bus. Uh, sorry, one second, please. Um, where was I? MLG Pro No Scoper Illuminati Confirmed. And when I got home, I went on Snapchat, accepted a request, and we started talking. And we snapped all night to the point I was smiling, kicking my feet in the air and shit. Yo, I'm coming in. No, 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 wait, wait, don't, don't. I'm, uh, I'm beating my meat. Wait, sh shit. Yo, what boy has you smiling like that? B boy. It's a girl. Man, shut the fuck up. Oh, oh, shit, you're serious. Whoa, wait, so the whole time you're watching Powerpuff Girls? It just had a good plot. Okay, bro. Okay, so this is what you gotta know. And my brother started running me through the do's and don'ts of being in a talking stage. I right, listen. Don't text her too much, but don't text her too little. Don't talk to too many other girls. Yep, nope, that, that won't be a problem right there. Yep, I, I know, buddy. And uh, you also gotta talk to her at school. So the next day at lunch, Bob, Billy, and I walk over to Jessica and her two friends, and we start talking again, and we make plans to go to the mall together. And boom. Boom, all of a sudden we started forming a little friend group. It was me, Bob, and Billy with Jessica, Kate, and Nikki. And we started hanging out damn near every day, hitting the mall, buying nothing, going to Nikki's house, doing nothing. But we had fun, and so inevitably, Bob and Kate start having a thing, Billy and Nikki start having a thing, and that just left me and Jessica. And so one late night, we're on Snapchat with my feet kicking in the air faster than ever, and Jessica hits me with a, so I've been thinking, well, uh, I, I like you. I like you back. So, uh, 
and I typed up, do you want to be my girlfriend? And I fucking threw my phone across the room, nervous as hell. I get the notification. And when I go to check what she said, she was like, yes, I do. And call me Josh Giddy, the way I just bagged this 12 year old. But the next day at school, when me, Billy and Bob walk up to our girlfriends, I started getting all nervous and shit. There was something about the title of being a boyfriend that just had me shitting bricks, bro. It was like, hey, Chains, how are you? Oh, you know, uh, I'm good. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, uh, how, how are you? Oh, I'm good. <laughs> <sighs> but now that all three of the boys had acquired girlfriends, Billy was like, hey, wh why don't we all see a movie this weekend? Like, like it'll be a triple date. Oh yeah, that's God, a great idea. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> it's a date, a uh, triple date. Yeah, fuck, yeah. And by the time the weekend rolled around, I was still terrified of the fact that I was going on a date. And to be honest, I was also scared of the movie, bro. We came to watch It, which as a 12-year-old sounded like straight nightmare fuel, bro. But nonetheless, me, Bob, and Billy hop on the bus and arrive at the movie theater fashionably late. And so when we walk through the doors, there was our three little girlfriends excited for our first dates. So we all walk up, hug, and then go to get our tickets. And I drop my entire life savings on her ticket and then go into debt for mine, but not Nonetheless, we head to the theater. Wait, sh should we get popcorn? Oh yeah, of course. Hey man, uh, how much is a large popcorn? A uh, large popcorn, th th that'll be $10. Damn! What, what happened? Are, are you okay? Yeah, I just realized they ran out of popcorn. Are, are you fucking stupid? Yeah, no, don't worry. Thank you, man. <laughs> is it no problem? <laughs> Have a good day. And we got to our seats and sat down and the movie began. And as the movie progressed, I realized it wasn't even too scary, but about 20 minutes deep, I get a tap on my shoulder from Bob. And he gestures to me the fact that him and Kate are holding hands. And I look over to Billy and Nikki and they're all cuddled up and shit, which meant I had to make a move, bro, which inconveniently made my hands start sweating bullets. So now I was in a position where I couldn't just grab her hand Hand, well my shit was sweaty as hell cause then she'd think I'm weird but then I also couldn't just sit there and do nothing the whole time cause then she'd also think I'm weird so I just started doing the only thing I could think of which was blowing on my hand like some hot soup and believe it or not made me look fucking weird but at least my hand was dry so I go and hold her hand but when I do I make a grave mistake a, a tactical error bro when I held her hand my hand was on top and hers was underneath against the armrest and my dumb ass was scared I was gonna crush her arm or some shit and I don't know where I got the idea that I even could crush her arm from, bro, because those 12-year-old stickman arms couldn't crush a fucking pretzel if they tried. But for whatever reason, I decided my best option would be to hover my arm slightly above hers so my one-pound arm couldn't come down and fucking demolish her forearm. And you know, this was cool for about... 60 seconds until I started feeling the burn which started hurting so bad that I forgot I was even watching a movie I was just a hundred percent focused on thugging this shit out and about an hour into the movie I was just fucking shaking relentlessly I mean at this point it wasn't even about not having this girl think I was weird because lord knows it was too late for that shit but now it was about proving to myself that I could finish the movie this way and sure enough I did but at what cost? Wow, you, you were so scared you were shaking, huh? N no, I, I wasn't scared at all, actually. <laughs> oh my god, I, are, are you sweating? No. So, you know, looking back, it, it wasn't my best performance, you know what I'm saying? But with that being said, after that triple date, Billy's girlfriend, Nikki, ended up breaking up with him and gave up on dating dudes as a whole. So, I mean, psh. It could always be worse, bro. Get your money, man, like a uh, I'm hopeful, yes I am, hopeful, but today, take this music and use it, let it take you away, and be hopeful, hopeful, and he'll make a way, I know it ain't easy, but... That's okay, cause we hooked Oh, wish that you could show some love Now listen to the hang so much when you see some other people coming now I wish I could teach the world my screen Why your music can have them chip enough to joy I bring I wish that we can hold hands Listen instead of dissing lessons from a grown man And now, nah, wish the families that lock But I love get some stocks Brand new shock in the lock But some gloves and now nah. As a broke stick man like myself I spent my fair share of time on the bus And if you spend a long enough time on the bus you will see some weird ass shit. I mean, I remember my first time getting on the bus by myself. I was feeling strong and independent. Next thing I know, a crackhead sits down beside me talking about, Yabba dabba doo. 
the the world is ending and uh you're gonna die a painful and lonely death buddy <laughs> and just like that i went from strong and independent to shitting my pants yeah bro the bus is just something else like one in ten people who enter the bus are straight gremlins bro i'm talking about the gremlins who know the perk is fake but they still pop it now you just gotta sit next to this motherfucker for another 30 minutes while he tells you about the kids in his basement but to be fair these gremlins aren't even the worst part of the bus the worst part of the bus is the energy you walk in there and everyone just stops and looks at you like they're sizing you up or some shit and you know who sizes you up the most the fucking goddamn motherfucking bus driver, bro. These bus drivers are just eternally pissed off. Every time I would get off the bus, I would try and cheer bro up, but they're just like like allergic to happiness or some shit. Hey, thank you. Have a great day, man. Shut your ugly ass up, little boy. I already know you get no bitches with your big ass forehead, no drip having ass with your skinny ass arms. Boy, you're built like a stick, man, bruh. Damn. Hey, bro, there could really only be two reasons why these bus drivers are so mad all the time. Either they had a demon villain origin story where they were abandoned as a child and never shown any form of love until one day. In freshman year of high school, Timmy met Linda. Linda was kind, smart, beautiful, and she paid attention to Timmy when nobody else would. Timmy asked Linda to be his girlfriend and she said yes. They dated all throughout high school and they even got into the same university so they could be together forever. Until one day when Timmy's world was flipped upside down. Timmy found out Tyrone had been laying some mean pipe on Linda this entire time. Everyone in Timmy's school made fun of him. Timmy could not let this slide. So he called out Tyrone to run the ones in front of the entire school. And without a single word, Tyrone winds up and hits Timmy with the meanest left hook any stick man had ever seen. Leaving Timmy slept, out cold, unconscious, in front of his classmates, his teachers, and even in front of Linda. Cause shit, if that happened to me, I'd be just as mad as Timmy over here. Now, realistically, the only other reason these drivers are so constantly mad would be because the driver's seat secretly has a stick built in. You see, this would explain why the driver constantly has a stick up his ass. I mean, shit, you really can't even blame him for being mad. But still, I'm gonna blame him. Cause I know these motherfuckers get pleasure whenever they see me running at full speed trying to make it to the bus stop in time. Cause they start stepping on the gas. <laughs> Dumbass. To be honest, there's nothing that leaves you more defeated than when you're sprinting to a bus stop. Then that shit just cruises on by and everyone on the bus is laughing at you. Damn. Honestly, at that point... I just give up and go home. But it hits a little bit different when that bus is your only way home. And it was the last bus. Cause it's 2 a.m. And now you gotta bunk up with the gremlins on the side of the street. All because that goddamn bus driver had a stick up his ass. Man, summer is just a beautiful season. The sun is shining, the trees are green, and you can stay out with your homies all night. And best of all, you get to sleep in till that shit gets absolutely fucked by the first day of school. And waking up to that first alarm of the school year will have you discombobulated as hell like chains, square doodle mat salami mouse. Mm, mm, mm. What? <sighs> you heard me, square doodle mat salami mouse. Wait. Wait, huh? Really? Key Torch Claw Bosomorph. Man, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah! What the fuck? And even though getting out of bed early hurts your soul, it's absolutely necessary you spend at least five minutes staring at your wall, contemplating your entire life. And if you're a real G, you laid out your toughest fit the night before, so you're low-key hyped to rock that shit to school. So you throw on your new shoes and flick up for the first day of school. And then you walk over to the establishment where you will not only pursue your educational prowess, but you may also dabble in what some call 
Stunting on these hoes. And man, I will say, linking up with your boys on the first day of school just hits different. Like, I be reuniting with the homies like I didn't just see them 12 hours ago. And we're all happy and shit until the school bell reminds me I just got my ass locked up for another 10 months. And I don't know about y'all, but I don't think I've ever made it to my first class of the year on time. Like, it'll be 9.15 and my dumbass will still be trying to figure out how to make it to room 347 by 8.55. And walking into your first class of the year late has to be one of the most uncomfortable situations you can experience, bro. Because the teacher will be like, oh, and who are you? Oh, uh, I I'm Chains. Well, Chains, why are you late? Uh, b because the bell rang before I got here. <sighs> All right, whatever. We waited for you before we started introductions. Oh, no, you shouldn't have. Well, you're welcome. We just wanted you to feel- No, like, you, you really shouldn't have, like- I don't want to do this shit. And tell me why all these teachers have been copy-pasting the same icebreaker games since preschool. Like that one where you have to start with an adjective that starts with the same letter as your name. Like, how do you have a group of legal adults in a circle, awkward as hell, talking about, uh, hi guys, I'm, I'm Super Sarah. Hey, hey y'all. <laughs> I'm, I'm Awesome Aiden. And I'm... Um, I'm a marvelous Marvin. Shit, if we don't stop doing these fucking icebreakers, I'm about to joyfully jump off a cliff. And after we're done grinding out icebreakers, these teachers have the audacity to show a whole 50 slide PowerPoint all about them. Like the fuck? This class is supposed to be the study of math, not the study of your daughter's soccer games, bro. And I'm not even gonna lie, my dumb ass will be out there taking notes, wondering how this seven-year-old's goals per game ratio is gonna help me on my trigonometry test. Then just as soon as you survive all that bullshit, you gotta go to the next class and do that shit again. And by the time you've learned half your teacher's favorite hiking spots and relationship statuses, you're relieved to hear the lunch bell. Only to find out the cafeteria is serving straight ass with a side of booty for lunch. And my standards aren't even high. Like during summer, I was on a seafood diet as they would say. When I see food... I eat that shit. But when it comes to this cafeteria food, I could even bring myself to smell that abomination they're calling meatloaf. But even though the food was straight dokey, I won't lie, it's kinda nice being back at the lunch table freestyling with the homies. But of course, all good things must come to an end. So the bell rings and I go to depart ways with the homies. All right, peace out, yeah, man. Yeah, see ya, bro. Oh shit, oh, are we going the same way? Damn, yeah, I guess so. All right, peace out for real. Yeah, yeah, see ya, bro. <clears throat> shit. Alright, my class is right here. Bro. Me too! Oh, shit. Let's go! Uh, Alright, class. I'm gonna be taking some attendance. Uh, correct me if I get your name wrong. Uh, Jason. Here. Uh, Billy. Yo. Megan. Present. Chains. Here. Charlie. That's me. Bob. No fucking Bro. way. Bro. Is there any, is there any Bobs in the room? Yo, yo, do you, do you hear that? Is that intro music? Does anyone here know a ball? Oh, no. Man, nothing beats a class where you got all the boys sitting together. Like, from the jump, you already know you're all about to fail the fuck out of that shit. But it's gonna be fun as hell. Alright, so, uh, everyone introduce yourselves and tell us what you did over summer break. Uh, m m my name's Bartholomew. <laughs> My, my name's Bartholomew, and I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, uh, I had a pretty rough summer, I mean, I crashed my car, my girlfriend broke up with me, someone robbed my house, my grandma got jumped the other day. <laughs> no, bro, not the grandma. You three in the back, disrespectful. And what's crazy about the first day of the school year is how these teachers will act all nice talking about, it's so lovely to see all your beautiful faces, and it's also nice to see you, Aiden. Wait, 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 wait. what the fuck? We're gonna have have an amazing fun year and guess what there's no homework today knowing damn well they're about to make up for it with twice as much homework tomorrow like they'll for real be handing out kindergarten ass coloring sheets the first day and then tomorrow you're getting your ass whooped by some calculus worksheets and i didn't even talk about the motherfuckers you'll be seeing in the halls on the first day like i don't know what these dudes be going through in those two months but motherfuckers be going from arthur kennedy to ak real fast bro Oh shit, is that you, Arthur? Oh, gee, don't be dropping the government name like that. G gov government name? But that's just your first name. Hey, fam, it's AK. Uh, I, I, man, what you been up to, bro? Hey, fam, I'm trapping, trying to make it out of the mud, you know? The, the, the mud? 
you live in a gated community. Oh shit, that's the ops right there, fam. Get down. The, the ops? That, that's just fucking Edward. Or the way these new freshmen be walking like they're scared a senior's gonna slap the books out of their hands and take their Fortnite V-Bucks gift card. Like, bro, you freshmen are worried about the wrong V-Card. Like, I don't know why, but the day these kids go from sophomore to seniors, they instantly decide to pull an EDP. Like, bro... You're 18 and she's fresh out of middle school. That's a whole crime. But that's not the only crime motherfuckers be committing on the first day of school. Some dudes be pulling up to school with the most atrocious fits known to man. Like there's no fucking way you laid out this ramen noodle chicken soup ass fit the night before, slept on it, then woke up and thought, oh yeah, that the hoes are gonna love this one. Like I'm not gonna lie, you could never catch me wearing the types of fit these motherfuckers be wearing bro like that shit should have never made it out the closet like i don't condone bullying but all i'ma say is your actions have consequences bro speaking of consequences every year it seems like the rules teachers tell you on the first day keep getting more strict like you'll be walking into the first class of the year all jolly and shit all of a sudden you're getting your shit smacked by the longest list of class rules you've ever seen hey class i'm super excited to have you we're gonna have so much fun this year but first i'm gonna go over some of the class rules okay so there will be no negativity no phones no food no talking when i'm talking Actually, no talking ever, no laughing, no smiling, breathe as quiet as possible, no washroom breaks, and last but not least, no having fun. So yeah, guys, like I said, I think we're gonna have a lot of fun this year. And just like that, man, summer's over and you're back to school. It's possibly one of the worst times of the year. Like, do you really think it's a coincidence that when school starts up, the sun just starts hiding and the leaves start dying? You, you see what I'm implying? But I will say, one day you might just look back back on these times is the good old days and you might just start crying skipping class in high school is a slippery slope like one day you can skip and it'll slide no problem like oh hey buddy well, welcome back uh we missed you <laughs> yeah <laughs> you skip two days you're chilling hey look who's back <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh. but when you go to class after skipping three days all of a sudden shit is serious chains what why haven't you been here huh well you you know it, it was some family stuff oh yeah family stuff what family stuff what, what, I, I don't really want to talk about what family stuff. It was my grandma's funeral. Damn. But, but that is no reason to miss a test. And Lord forbid, if you miss a whole week, the school board turns into the FBI. Like during the whole pandemic, one of my homies refused to go to any online classes. And one day he was enjoying his extended vacation while smoking up outside his crib. Next thing he knows, he's making direct eye contact with his science teacher while smoking grass. And because they started going FBI mode when you skip your classes, the homies discovered a top secret method so we could skip classes with zero consequences. So when you would skip a class, the teachers would instantly hop on their laptops and whip up an email along the lines of, Mrs. For Real, are you aware that your son Chains has missed his science class today? If this is continued, Chains' grade will continue to drop which might ultimately lead to him failing my class. Mr. Perkinson. Now, Mr. Perkinson would write these emails with the hopes of my mom reading them and then beating my ass. When it really went like, my mom would read it and she would politely ask me how my science class was today. I would cap my ass off and then she would proceed to beat my ass. And one day after I got my shit whooped, I was talking to the homie Bob. Yo, we're going to Chipotle next class. You trying to come? Man, I don't know. I'm getting real tired of these ass whoopings, bro. Ass whoopings? You're you're getting ass whoopings? Yeah, bro. Mr. Perk never fails to type up an email that results in the leather belt. Oh, what? N nobody ever told you about the secret method? Secret method? Uh oh, you mean like wearing extra pants so the belt doesn't hit so hard? No, I'm, I'm talking about the secret method so Mr. Perkinson's can't email your mom. You, what? 
You, wh why didn't you tell me sooner, bro? So essentially, the method starts at the very beginning of the school year. At my school, they would give you this form with your parents' email, phone number, all the contact information, you know what I'm saying? You would need this form filled out and signed by a parent or guardian and then handed into the office. However, this man, Bob, conceptualized one of the greatest plans of our generation. And it went like this. So you would receive the empty form from the school, take it home to your parents slash guardian, get that shit filled out and get that signature. Then secretly, when nobody is watching, you hop on your computer, you make a fake email like Bob's mom123 at gmail.com. Then you would change your mom's contact information into that fake ass email and then deliver it to the office like nothing happened. So when Mr. Parkinson smartass tries to get me whooped with one of those emails, I get that shit in my inbox. I read it through and respond with some shit like, Dear Mr. Perkinsons, thank you very much for bringing this to my attention. I was unaware of my son's absence in pursuing his educational prowess. I will discipline him with a punishment that may or may not involve me whooping the absolute shit out of his tushy. Thank you, Mr. Perkinsons. And I already know this dude, Mr. Perkinsons, was reading that email like, Oh, yup, he is definitely getting his ass beat tonight. Meanwhile, I was typing that shit up in bed while munching on some nachos. So you best believe I was abusing this newly found secret strategy. I mean, I was missing every other class. And it was just all sunshine and rainbows. But you know what they say. It's not all sunshine and rainbows. I mean, I really don't recommend using this strategy. And I'm not saying that to be some mature role model. I say that because there was one flaw in the strategy Bob forgot to tell me. And that was as soon as my mom saw my report card with all those absences. God damn. She made up for every single beating I missed. All right, next up, we got Billy presenting his baking soda volcano experiment. <laughs> hey, hey guys, how we doing? All right, so uh, you see if I put a, a solid amount of baking soda in here and then uh, a little bit of vinegar here. <clears throat> um, uh, it, it's supposed to explode. Oh, oh shit. fuck. Quickly, organize a single file line in alphabetical order. Hey, I'm first. No, you're not, bro. I'm first. Your last name is literally Johnson. I have two last names. Listen, bro, I'm not saying we shouldn't have school drills and all, but what I am saying is the school drills we do have are straight bullshit. Like, if there was a fire in my class, I'm jumping straight out the window, the fuck? There is no way you'll catch me waiting for Alexander and Arnold to debate who's first in line while I'm out here getting sauteed. And shit, fire drills aren't even close to being the worst of the drills because we got lockdown drills. Now, I don't know who planned out these drills, but god damn, these drills are ass. Now, if you never had lockdown drills, they're pretty much a foolproof plan set in place to completely counter anyone pulling up to school with a strap. You see, the plan is pretty simple. You lock the door, gather all the students into the corner of the class, and you turn the lights out. And the reason we turn the lights out is so we can politely tell the intruder that nobody's home. Now, if every classroom followed these steps perfectly, we might even be able to convince the dude that it's a pro D-Day or something. Now listen, I hate to be the bearer of bad news. I really do, but there's one minor flaw in this plan. The, the, the shooter's in the class, bruh. You're out here telling the opposition your exact game plan. Then you're surprised when bro pulls up to the hiding spot. Like, shit, it's just easy pickings at this point. Now, earthquake drills, man. The game plan here is to essentially hop under your desk and start counting. Now, when I was in kindergarten, I thought this whole earthquake drill thing was a fun game we played to learn how to count. But 12 years later, we were still counting. Like, let's be honest. What the fuck is counting gonna do? Are you telling the earthquake how long it has to dig? 
dismantle the school because i'm pretty sure it doesn't give a shit how long it takes me personally i feel like the best way to see if an earthquake is over is by observing whether or not the entire fucking building is shaking but listen i will say this out of all the drills the earthquake drill is pretty valid like whoever thought of this one was kind of cooking i mean these desks are pretty much made out of steel bro like out of all my years i've never seen one break before so it probably provides some solid protection but shit me personally i'm still jumping through the fucking window bruh i don't care how many times i practice crouching under my desk if i ever felt the slightest shake in the ground i'm out of that hole so if you carry the 674 to the power of two over to the 47 you will find oh shit what well, well, why did change just dive out of the window shit i don't know now i'm gonna keep it a stack i've never done a single tornado drill in my life so after doing some quick research it looks like you just um you, you do this now i don't know shit about tornadoes but what i do know is that I'm not gonna be doing this shit. Like, I'm no scientist, but I don't think the doggy position is gonna stop the tornado from packing you up. So to be honest, once again, I'm jumping out the fucking window, bro. Like, that's just my default reaction. And if that tornado ends up putting me on a t-shirt, then so be it. At least the last position I was in before I died was not the face down, cheeks up pose. But bro, imagine being the kid who poorly timed his piss and now the fire alarm's going off midstream. And you won't even get to know if it's a drill or not. Then there's the whole do you wash your hands dilemma, right? Because cause you don't want to get trapped in the fire and fucking die. But on the other hand... You don't want to just not wash your hands. Because if it's a drill, then, then then you're just left with dirty ass hands. And while you're trying to decide whether to wash your hands or not, the class is outside taking attendance like Rosalina. Here. Jared. Here. Chains. Chains? Oh, fuck. W where did Chains go? I don't know, bruh. Shit. Oh, no, nah, no. Nah, I was just in the bathroom. Woo. Oh, oh you, you scared me there for a second. Wait. Did, did, did you wash your hands? Mm, no. I, I was in a little bit of a rush. <laughs> Get back in there and wash your hands, buddy. Uh... Now, the thing about school drills is they happen pretty often. I mean, every few weeks, they throw in a fire drill here and a little earthquake drill there. So when the fire bell actually goes off, motherfuckers just assume it's a drill. They're out here horsing around, making jokes and shit, while the school's actually getting fucking cremated. But after almost all the drills, our alphabetical single file line goes out to the front of the school and on the field with every other class. And the amount of buffoonery that goes down on this field is insane. Insane, bro. I mean, everyone walks in with a single file line, but after five minutes, that shit looks like a Travis Scott concert, bro. Like, I remember one time my high school got a bomb threat called in, so every class assembled the good old alphabetical line, and we went out onto the field. And we were out there for a minute, bro. I remember looking around, and these motherfuckers were running the world's biggest game of Duck Duck Goose, like there wasn't a whole ass bomb threat called into our school. That same day, one kid brought a football to the field, and all of a sudden, motherfuckers are running a pickup game while we're waiting to see if our school is gonna explode or not and of course the teachers tried to stop it but these kids just used it as a diversion play and got another touchdown all right so now that we thoroughly dissected each and every school drill it's only fair we hit them with a tier list so let's see what we got here uh oh oh we're starting with lockdown drills what, what are we saying uh fucking f tier holy shit they are ass <clears throat> Alright, uh, ne next up we got fire drills. Now these drills do get the job done, but I'm not gonna lie. I'm not fucking with this whole single file alphabetical bullshit. So I'm gonna have to give this John a C tier. Now tornado drills, uh, you, you gotta go in the doggy position. Bro, I got no choice but to give this a D tier. And last but not least, my personal favorite, earthquake drills. Th th they're still kinda ass, B tier. And bro, I know some of y'all may be thinking, you you can't just talk shit about the school drills and, and not present any better solution. Well, lucky for you, I have devised the best and only way to fully counter any natural or artificial disasters. It's simple. For a guy like me who's 7 feet, 325 pounds, 0.5% body fat, and a 7 foot wingspan, I just simply remove myself from the situation. However, I do understand that I am built different. So for your average Joe, I have devised another plan. It's also simple. The moment some shit goes down, every 
everyone runs at full speed out of the building. And of course, some would argue that not everyone is going to be able to make it out of the building in time and that some people are faster and stronger than others and you know what that's called? Natural selection. You see, if I was principal, instead of running students through these impractical drills, I would be running students through a different kind of drills. I would have my students in peak physical condition. Instead of a fire bell, I would have a push-up bell. At any given time, if that shit goes off, you drop down and give me 50, or your ass is getting expelled. You see, this way, when there's a fire, everyone can simply remove themselves from the situation. Or in other circumstances, they can simply intervene. <laughs> Man, family functions have the weirdest dynamic, bro. Like, how have you known these people your entire life, but have still never gone past a surface level conversation? I mean, let me know if it's just my family, but every function is the same. The whole gang links up, and everyone just asks the most generic small talk questions to each other. Hey, uh, how, how's that new place you bought? Oh, yeah, you know, it, it's good. And how's the kids doing? Oh, you know, they're, they're good. Oh, and how, how's the wife? Man, fuck your wife. I don't want to hear any of these NPC conversations, bro. And let me know if I'm getting too specific here, but what about that one uncle who goes by the name of either Bob, Jerry, or Dave? And this dude will just always be saying the most out-of-pocket things imaginable. Oh, how's your daughter Jane doing? Oh, Jane's always been hot, eh? Bob, she's 15! This uncle be at the family function thinking it's Coachella or something. Bob, another beer's a little bit excessive, don't you think? Yeah, football! I'm the youngest person in my whole family, which for whatever unspoken reason, it just means everyone has the go-ahead to flame the living oh, shit out of me. Hey, Chain, still no girlfriend, huh? I guess you're not too good with the ladies there. <laughs> but I make one joke back and I'm the bad guy. You don't seem too good with the ladies yourself, seeing as your wife just divorced you and she took the kids with her. <laughs> Am I right? Not only do they feel free to roast your whole existence simply because you were born last, they unanimously decide you will be everyone's personal butler. Hey bud, go get another beer for me. Alright, yeah, yeah, for sure. Thanks. Now you better get started on mowing that lawn. Grass isn't gonna cut itself, am I right? Oh my god, bro. And coming into these family functions, you would think your mom is your closest ally. But as soon as she gets the chance, she will expose your biggest secret for a little bit of parent clout. You guys will never guess what I found under Chain's bed yesterday. Oh my god, what is it? Yeah, tell what? us. What? No way. Sometimes when my family tries to make small talk with me, they just miss the boat completely. So, buddy, how's those swimming lessons going for you? The, the, the swimming lessons I took when I was five? Yeah, 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 right, those ones. Uh, they're... They're good, I, I f finished them a little while ago. Oh, is, is that right? Uh, good for you, buddy. And bro, don't get me started on those recycled ass jokes. Well, looks like you got your workout for the day. Ah, oh, looks like you've gotten so tall. What are you feeding this kid, am I right? Oh, Bob, I, th I think you got some food in your beard. Oh, don't worry, uh, I'm saving it for later. Ah, oh, good one, oh, Bill. Oh, Bob, he's so funny. Thank you, thank you. I guess everyone at the function must have Alzheimer's or something. Because these jokes will have them cracking up like they haven't heard the same joke the past 15 functions. <sighs> but cousins, man. Cousins are the saving grace of family functions. Without cousins, you would have no choice but to participate in the tomfoolery of small talk. I'd be walking in the function just praying to see that one cousin. And bro, I have a family function survival tip for you. You always have to stay within arm's reach of either your siblings or your cousins. Because whenever some bullshit goes down, you just give each other the look and flee the scene. And because when you get caught lacking on your own at the function, you get jumped. Metaphorically speaking, of course. Man, there's a lot of questionable places on Earth, like the Bermuda Triangle, or Area 51, or even this place. 
but none of these places can compare to the questionability of high school and so inevitably there's some weird ass kids in that joint like you gotta be careful who you talk to bro because you approach the wrong student and shit you're getting cussed out by a pack of hyenas in social studies class and usually i never care what other people do like you do you you know what i'm saying but when i gotta sit through that shit for six hours a day five days a week shit can you stop doing you for like five minutes bro and speaking of annoying kids there's always that one kid in class who's constantly gargling on the teacher's meat like we'll be finishing up the last class on a friday and of course the teacher's pets gotta say some shit like mr cumminson is there no homework for us to complete over the weekend oh, well, well, well no uh believe it or not i'd rather not spend my weekend marking your shitty ass little essays so. don't worry mr cumminson i can help you mark essays all weekend long whoa 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 I isn't that against school policy w well what's against school policy riding mr cumminson's dick with no license <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're not allowed to swear. And of course, the class clown. And man, I really just gotta commend him for his work. Like, it's not an easy job being the class clown. Dude throughout his entire GPA, future, and probably got his shit whooped on multiple occasions just to keep the class entertained. Like, I'll be rotting in English class, but to fall asleep until the class clown starts cooking the teacher for no apparent reason. And next, we're looking at adjectives. Uh, does anyone have any good examples? Yeah, uh, Jason. Uh... Bald as shit. Oh, well, shit. no, that, that's actually three words. No, no, no. I wasn't even using an example. You're just so goddamn bald, Yo, it's distracting. God hey, damn. you know what they say. The more hair I lose, the more head I get. Stop <laughs> <cat>. <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't think that's true, Mr. Clean, because you got more hair than you got hoes. And that says a lot with your Caillou looking ass. <laughs> Yo. Just go to detention, man. And you know we got the Redditor, bro. Now, don't be deceived. Redditors can come in all shapes and sizes uh, especially the extra large size and uh and even the extra extra large size but regardless they all have the same programming encoded into their brains they're either talking about a video game or they're quoting a meme bro and i got a little piece of advice to any redditors out there i don't care how funny that shit may be in your head if you have to verbally describe what a meme looks like for your sake just don't say it bro because i promise you that joke will not hit and next up we got darren presenting a slideshow on 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 why elon musk is is poggers uh yeah uh wh whenever you're ready <laughs> me standing in front of the class waiting to present <laughs> you, you know that meme where mike wazowski is standing there in an awkward fashion with his his hands by his side and he's got like two eyes <laughs> <laughs> Now, there really is levels to being a Redditor. And don't get me wrong, they're not all that bad, but the ones that got that I paused my game to be here T paired up with the beer belly neck beard combo. <laughs> That shit is lethal. And if you press E to interact with one of these bad boys, you'll get stuck in an endless time loop hearing about Among Us memes and hentai. Now the band kids are like the Redditor's second cousin. Like, like it's all the same shit, but, but bro just knows how to play a tuba. Now on the opposite side of the spectrum, we got the dudes who touch grass the athletes now i feel like these dudes got a bad reputation when it comes to the jock stereotypes from the movies because the ratio of athletes shoving nerds in lockers is, is probably like one in 75 and the one was was most likely just having a bad day speaking of bad days getting shoved in a locker really has a way of ruining your day and you really got to feel bad for the nerds who have to endure this type of harassment every single day well actually it's only every other tuesday after their football practice yeah but you shouldn't have to be shoved in a locker at all you you shouldn't have to be that's grammatically incorrect it's actually supposed Man, to be you shouldn't shut be shut the f there's really just three types of smart people the first dude you wouldn't even be able to tell bro's smart because he's just lazy as fuck he'd be acing every test using one percent of his brain power like he's got that elon musk potential but shit he just doesn't really feel like being a billionaire today or on the other hand we got the weirdly political and argumentative smart dude this guy used up all his iq points on logic and reasoning and completely forgot to upgrade his social awareness because this is the kind of guy that everyone mutually agrees is just annoying as fuck like you can't do shit around this dude without him trying to start an argument yo chains you think i sink this half court shot Bro, there is no chance you make that shit. But, 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 you are incorrect. No chance implies that statistically there is a 0% chance that it goes in, which is wrong as others have made this exact shot before Billy. <gasps> 
Truthfully, there's a chance for just about anything to happen, even though the chances may be slim. Well, that's cap, because there's no chance for you, bro. N no chance for me to what? You gotta be more specific. For, for you, you to, to get, get some bitches. And some people are just smart, and they still have the ability to be a normal functioning member of society. A lot of these people are chill as fuck. Like, they can teach you shit you don't understand, carry you in group projects, and if they're goaded, they can just bless you with the homework. And this is not the same as getting your homework from the class clown or the athlete because this shit is actually correct and next we got the other dudes who touch grass the stoners <laughs> why are you looking at me there's always a dude posted up in the back of the class who's visually fried as fuck you'll commonly see him posted up with a snack of some sort and you know they never forget the bev. Now you don't want this dude's homework because I promise you we will just have a bunch of doodles with some mushrooms and this graffiti S and somehow these motherfuckers will manage to take a multiple choice test and get every answer wrong. Like it's actually kind of impressive when you think about it. But besides that, they're just cool people. But I'm not gonna lie. I can't really say the same about the hot Cheeto girls, bro. Like these girls put in an effort to be as loud as possible. Like Lord forbid, if one of these girls breaks one of their long ass nails, it doesn't matter if you sit on the opposite side of the class, you're gonna hear about it. You're also gonna hear them chewing those hot Cheetos cause they be lip smacking like crazy. Speaking of smacking, there's always that one kid in school who simply enjoys smacking motherfuckers and at my school it was jordan johnson and if you see my high school fights video that's why you don't mess with me yo. i'm jordan johnson or my high school dances video I'm Jordan Johnson. You would know Jordan Johnson keeps a solid ass record, but it's at the point where bros fought so many people that nobody really even fucks with them. Cause now it's like either you fought Jordan Johnson or your homies fought Jordan Johnson. And either way, it's fuck Jordan Johnson. But all bias aside, you just got to appreciate the top tier high value entertainment that JJ brings to the school. Like after a long day of calculus and chemistry, there's nothing like watching a dude get Batista the bombed in front of the whole school and speaking of the whole school 75 percent of the whole school are straight npcs and there's nothing wrong with it it is what it is because honestly i love you for that I couldn't be happier to share the school with you, my man. Because I'm not going to lie. I don't think I would survive a school without NPCs. The sheer amount of Redditors, Hot Cheeto Girls, and Teachers Pets? Fuck. I'd rather be homeschooled at that point. But all jokes aside, man, every student plays a crucial part of the high school experience. So remember to appreciate everyone. Man, the very moment my stickman lips graze the tip of that sweet, sweet Zaza, it's wraps for all the food in the fridge. And as soon as that THC tickles my brain, it's GG's. The food in my closet is already consumed, bruh. And shit, when I run out of food in the crib, I give my condolences to the local McDonald's workers. Because, man, I'm about to have those motherfuckers working overtime. Now, listen, man. Shout out to all my big homies out there. But I'm going to make it clear real quick that I am not one of y'all. In fact, I make sure that I am precisely 64 pixels wide at all times. However, I will say mentally and in my heart, I am a little bit of an EDP 445. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. I like food. What I was trying to say is that I like food, and uh, usually I can resist food, but once that devil's lettuce gets a hold of my brain, I become a certified fat ass. I'm talking 750 pixels wide at least. I'm eating anything in sight, and as soon as I run out of food, I go to a new site and eat everything in sight again. And honestly, this shit is becoming a problem, bro. No shit, buddy. Your arteries are clogging. Yeah, yeah. And your blood pressure is through the roof. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that too. And you're developing type 7 diabetes. Whoa, 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 type 7? I, I thought there was only two types. There was, until your fat ass decided to eat 87 ice cream sandwiches. How the fuck do you stomach 87 ice cream sandwiches? Anyways, man, the munchies are lit, bro, because it's the only time you can truly taste each individual atom as it hits your tongue. Like, eating some good food while high is like a meditation, bro. Like, when you're zooted, munching on some Doritos, and you start closing your eyes, shit, you might just fuck around and become the Dorito. Now, this happens to me on a routinely basis, and as heavenly as that experience is... 
I must warn you, when you come out of your Dorito coma, you will be at least five bags deep in that motherfucker, and your hands may never be the same. Man, I'm still trying to recover to this day. Yeah, my Doritos still taste like fingers, bro. And if staining my fingers orange and developing a new type of diabetes sounds bad, my munchies addiction gets worse, bro. Because when you combine the zooted desire for food with the distorted judgment of the baked brain, shit, that's the perfect equation to put me in the crippling debt. Especially back in the day, because as a youngin', the only thing I was cooking was my brain cells, bro. So that meant I had to buy food. And to put it into simpleton terms, well, I was broke as shit. I remember one hot sunny day, me and the boys were chilling at a carnival with some of our other boys, and one of those boys whips out his dat pen. And so of course everyone flocks around that dude and chiefs the fuck out of his dat pen, and 15 minutes later, that shit hit. But you know what hit even harder? The goddamn munchies. And so there I was, walking around the carnival, absolutely blasted with $50 to my name, looking for something to eat. And don't get me wrong, the carnival had lots of options, but they were really taxing out here. And for a dude with 50 bones to his name, I needed to find the most bang for my buck. And there I saw it. It, it was beautiful. A pink ice cream truck glistening in the summer sun. So you know I had to hop in line. And as I'm waiting in this line, the dude in front of me turns around and he's like, damn, bro, you look high as giraffe balls, dude. What? Yeah, me? Nah, nah, what? Me? No. Hey, hey, don't worry, dude. <laughs> I am too. Oh, shit. So me and my newfound homie are just chopping it up, talking about how sensational this ice cream is about to be, and soon enough, it was the homie's turn to order. Yo, dude, le let me borrow one of those cookie dough ice cream cones. All righty, here you go. That'll be 12 bucks. $12, bro, that, that's like half my net worth. Trust me, it's worth it, dude. Yo, let me get a, a, a cookie, cookie, uh, cookie cone. All right, cookies and cream, here you go. And as I licked that thing, man, that shit was sensational as fuck. But as I turned around, I seen the baked homie step into a pothole and absolutely fumble his ice cream cone. And I'm not gonna lie. That was some of the saddest shit I ever seen. So I go walk over to give him some of mine. Hey, man, you, you want some cookies and cream? Oh, shit. Thank you, man. Bro, did you just drop both of our $12 ice cream cones? Fuck. Then we were back in line like nothing ever happened. But man, waiting in that sun, my mouth was parched and my eyes were dry. And by the time we made it to the end of the line, I was looking like dried up SpongeBob, bro. Hey, it's you again. Can I get the, the cookie cone, the cookie cone, the cream, the one with the cream? Yeah. And at last, after dropping half my net worth on ice cream, I took a big bite of that ice cream cone and man, I felt every sugar granule, every atom, every proton and electron contained within that bite. And for the time being, the munchies were cured. Listen, bro, in this world, there's levels to clout. You could get yourself some Instagram followers. You could stack up a few bands. You could even be famous, but there's only one spot in life that is superior to the rest. A spot so glorious and sought after that they are idolized like no other. It's me. I've got the infinite money glitch. Come on, Jimmy. You know it's me. I need a max win. Man, shut the fuck up, Drizzy. I'm literally Kanye West. Nah, but I'm the top G. All right, Lil. Bro, let's go band for band then. It's me. But but I'm the fastest kid in my school. Bro, I don't know who decided speed would be the deciding factor for who's the king of the school, but all I'ma say is that motherfucker's the GOAT, bro, because I was the fastest kid in my school. I was clapping everyone in races, I was breaking track records, and I had all the nine-year-old baddies, man. I wish I could still pull like that. Alright, it's just a miscommunication, you know, like when I say nine-year-old baddies, I didn't mean Explain like- Explain it to the judge, buddy. Sick fuck. And because I peaked in elementary school, come with me and we'll take a look back at some of the first years of our lives and maybe some of the best, am I right? <laughs> 
Kindergarten. Coming into kindergarten, kids were either excited or terrified as fuck for their first day. I mean, I would be pretty fucking pissed too if I knew this was the beginning of me being locked up every day for 13 years. But kindergarten was funny as hell because these kids had no clue what was right and wrong, so they'd be saying the most outrageous shit for no reason at all, bro. <laughs> hey, buddy with the hat, can you pass me the skin color crayon? Um, I mean, at this age, kids were just walking NPCs, and I can't even blame them. I mean, they haven't developed consciousness yet, bro. Like, at this age, recess consisted of catching bugs, playing on the monkey bars, and, and fucking eating sand. And I've talked about the high school bathrooms and all the wild shit that happens in there, but to be honest, the elementary school bathrooms blow that shit out the water, bro. Because these kids aren't hitting vape tricks, no. They're hitting toilet trick shots, trying to set some world record for the farthest piss taken from the toilet. Toilet. And let's just say even Stephen Curry couldn't splash that three-pointer. So essentially, motherfuckers was just pissing on the ground. Like, you need to walk into that bathroom 110% alert, or else the next thing you know, you're getting that R. Kelly treatment, bro. And I remember my kindergarten had those green, yellow, and red cards to show how good you were that day, but there was always that one kid with the permanent red. I'm talking the teacher didn't even bother to change his shit the next day, because everyone knows as soon as he walks into class, he's doing some fuck shit. For me, it was this kid we'll call Dennis, because he was a menace, bro. He was always loud, always threatening throwing shit, but besides being a menace, he was also a truth speaker, a fact spitter, for better or for worse, cause this little guy had no filter. Okay, Leah, you're up first for our show and tell. <sighs> okay, um, I brought my favorite painting of mine, uh, this right here, this one's me, and this is my dog, P Peanut Butter. That shit is ass! Dennis, what did we say about saying the truth out loud? I I mean, I mean, not the, not the truth. I'm, ta I'm talking about like, he was the only dude I knew who could talk over the quiet coyote. I mean, to this day, if I see one of those things, I just can't talk. Like, I just can't talk over it. I mean, maybe he's gonna eat me. I don't fucking know. But there was one thing that could shut Dennis up, and one thing only. Boy-girl seating arrangements. Dennis always had so much to say until you put him beside Isabel and Leah, and all of a sudden it's like, Hey, what are you drawing? Nothing. Aw, is that your dog? Maybe. Shit, he's just like me for real. <laughs> like, to this day, you know? Oh shit. And then we go outside for lunch, and don't get me wrong, eating sand for fun was great and all, but as kids got older, everyone started to play games, some of which consisted of tag, manhunt, soccer, basketball, grounders, red ass, kickball, jump rope, tetherball, and what is possibly the most goaded game of all time. Four square. This game was legendary, bro, but this shit used to get heated as fuck. I mean, kids were making truces, making whole clans, and that right there was real beef. Like, if you caught the ops lacking at nap time, it was on sight, bro. Psst, what? Oh, no, wait. wait, wait. You're a poopy no! head. But man, crushes were everything in elementary school. Like, if you told anyone you had the smallest crush on a girl, words getting out fast and the entire class is gonna be organizing a wedding for tomorrow. But some kids just didn't use their words, like this one girl in my elementary school who most definitely had a crush on me. I mean, once again, I, I was the fastest kid in my elementary school, so... <laughs> As I was saying, this girl had a crush on me, but she didn't like using her words, so essentially, she just like... She she just beat my ass. I mean, what better way to tell someone you like them? And she must have really liked me, bro, because you could see it when I came home. Like, oh my god, Chains, what happened? Oh, uh, well, uh, I think this girl at school likes me. Oh, yeah, that that's great. B but why do you have so many bruises? Well, well, Mom, I think she really likes me. No, I, I think you need to go to the hospital. Yeah, yeah, probably, yeah. And there was also that one kid who went around teaching people swear words just because he could. And of course, when I learned some shiny new words, I'm gonna gonna use them. I, I mean, I still fucking do. But I remember just talking with my friends, dropping the F-bomb, feeling cool as hell. And then one time I see this girl hauling ass over to the teacher and whispering in her ear. And I already knew what was going down because this girl was the biggest snitch known to man. Like, unprovoked. It was like a hobby or some shit to her. And her name was Erin. Like, her real name was Erin, spelled E-R-I-N. Yeah, how's it feel to get snitched on, buddy? But getting in trouble in elementary school was tough because they would act like you were committing war crimes for the smallest things. Like when I got snitched on for swearing, I was in grade four. I was a big boy, you know what I'm saying? But my teacher was pissed, bro. Chains, you can never say that word. It's horrendous. Um, 
What does horrendous mean? It's not good, okay? Aw, oh, shit, my bad. Chains! Aw, oh, sorry, it's just stuck in my fucking brain. Chains, cut it out right now or you get detention. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, motherfucker. What? And I'm not gonna lie, the most cursed part of elementary school was the talent shows, bro. Because the teachers expect you to be all quiet and serious and shit, but it was literally a real-life try not to laugh. Like, how am I supposed to be serious when Jimmy's up there shitting out Minecraft parodies like it's comedy gold? I mean, at my school, it was less of a talent show and more of a come on stage in front of the entire school and do whatever the fuck you want for 10 minutes type of show. And man, that shit was brutal. It was like watching paint dry. But if the paint was seven years old and standing on a stage in front of the entire school nervous as hell shitting his pants Cuz elementary school had some weird kids, bro Like those kids who used to put glue on their hands to let it dry so they could peel it off Or the kid who would just straight up eat the glue Or the weird kid who would secretly take a bite out of every single foam football Like how are you that hungry? The kid who only wore shorts through rain and snow The kid who was mad at everyone for no reason The kid who wouldn't stop yapping The kid who who always had to flex how strong their dad is. My dad is so much stronger than yours, he can beat up your dad with his pinky finger. He can bench press 625 pounds. Wait, wait, what even is that? You don't know what a bench press is? No, 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 what the fuck is a dad? The kid who thought he was Albert Einstein, the snitch n named Aaron lives at 354 Stickman Way, the fake snitch. Bro, bro, you won't believe what I just did. <gasps> what, what'd you do? I just put my juice box in the recycling. Get this? With the straw inside. <gasps> uh, I'm telling the teacher. I, I'm telling. Bro, chill, chill. Teacher, chill. teacher. Uh, Jackson. Yeah, can I go to the bathroom? Ah. Uh, the teacher's pet named Aaron. E R I N. Postal code three three one zero. And of course. The fastest kid in the school, you know what I'm saying? That was me. I, I was him. I, I was the fastest kid in my man. You could be the 47th president of the United States, and you'd still get flamed in school. It's just inevitable. It could be your haircut, your clothes, and bro, even when there's nothing to roast, somebody's gonna try and spit out some bullshit anyways. Hey yo, why does Carl's face look like Spider-Man's left nut? <laughs> yo, it's I so true. <laughs> why do you know what his nuts look like? And bro, when I was in middle school. All my clothes were hand-me-downs I got from my neighbor, and this motherfucker just didn't want to see me win, bro. Because I was getting piles of v-neck shirts and jeans that didn't even fit. And not only did my neighbor have no drip, but dude was 10 years older than me, so every fit I made was just a decade too late. And pulling up to school and that shit had me feeling like a rotisserie chicken, the way I was getting cooked at a 360-degree angle, bro. But my fit wasn't even the only thing that was outdated, because my phone looked like the first phone ever created and it acted like it too i mean i would have to click the screen five times and then send a prayer to the heavens just to turn that shit on and only real g's know the pain of having to whip out an old ass phone around someone else like i remember this one time a girl came up to me and asked if she could add me on snapchat and when i gave her my phone my shit crashed bro uh i think your phone just ran out of battery oh no <laughs> don't worry sometimes you just gotta yeah, here you go. Uh, actually, I have a boyfriend, so... Wait, I'm wait, gonna... wait, no, wait, wait, I'm wait, what gonna... the fuck? And ever since that day, that phone was my number one op, bro. So much so that the next time a girl came up and asked for my Snapchat, I, st I started fucking malfunctioning, bro. Hey, c can I get your Snapchat? Uh, uh no. Oh. Uh, okay. Oh uh, no no no! It's just it's just cause uh I don't have Snapchat. Oh well, what what about your phone number? I actually don't even have a phone. You don't have a phone? Oh well, well I, d I did, but th then my dog ate it. You know? Oh my god, is your dog okay? Uh, sorry, I I don't even have a dog. I don't I don't have one. Then uh uh who ate your phone? Oh fucking <laughs> I did. Ah. <laughs> uh... Wait, was that? Nope. Like, I do appreciate all the hand-me-downs, because without them, I would be walking through the school butt-booty naked. But to be honest with you, if it was a choice, I would have rather been butt-booty naked. Because these v-necks were straight girl repellent. Like, there's birth control, there's condoms, and then there's v-necks, bruh. But shit, I, I mean, you could still pull a lot while wearing a v-neck, but it's just like... It's just gonna be dudes. And just when you think I couldn't have been more roastable, my mom will be like, Oh, sweetie, you need a haircut. No, 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 please, mom, no, no, no.
My mom used to take me to this shop that gave out $1 haircuts, bro. And these motherfuckers were straight speed running these cuts. They'd be asking what kind of cut you want while cutting your hair. And by the time you get to show them the cut you want, your shit is already done, bro. And my mom must have not been tipping them either, considering the fact that every time I went back, the cuts kept getting worse and worse. Until one time, I walked out there with my head bleeding like I asked for a two on the sides, and she hit me with a negative two. Now, don't get me wrong. When I pulled up to school, wearing the most abominable fit known to man with the atrocious haircut and shitter phone combo i got my shit roasted flamed grilled sauteed deep fried and then thrown into the goddamn microwave like the type of flaming that has you going home and just taking an extensive look in the mirror questioning if you should legally change your name to albert and flee the country. But somehow, this motherfucker Carl got flamed even harder than me just for being Carl. Like, whenever a friend group is created, there's just one dude selected to be the punching bag for the entire group. And you know, I feel bad and shit, but like... It's better Carl than me, bro, so I'ma slip a few jabs in if I have to. Yo, what the fuck is Carl eating, bro? Oh, oh, hell no. Nah. Wait, whoa, whoa, Chains is eating the exact same thing. Nah, what? <laughs> Your shit looks like it tastes like cardboard with honey mustard. <laughs> wow, how did you know? <laughs> like, Carl can't even get a little chuckle out without getting crucified, bro. Damn, he's fucking that shit up. Looks like he hasn't eaten it in weeks, bro. <laughs> Oh, hell no, nah, Carl. I know you're not laughing. Yeah, n n I'm not. You're built like SpongeBob brown pants. You, you look like a malnourished Santa Claus, bro. Like, god damn, that's a face only a mother can love. W what did I do? Now, getting roasted around your boys is tough, but that pales in comparison to the pain and embarrassment of getting roasted in front of your crush, bro. Yo, Chains, what did you get on the science test? I I'm not gonna lie, I got like a 76. <laughs> I'm surprised you're not smarter with that big ass head of yours. Yeah, <laughs> good one, Joe. No, like for real, your shit is massive. Well, like the sheer amount of brain you could fit in that bitch should make you Einstein. You look like you should be pulling 10,000 IQ plays right now. You look like you got the solution to world hunger somewhere hidden in that big ass noggin. Like, like how do you even stand up straight with that absolute cranium for a head. But I remember this one time I got my shit flamed so hard in front of an entire audience that I was brought to tears. But I, I mean, I was six. I was six years old. And the day was December 24th, Christmas Eve. So my mom brought me and my brother to this improv play. And as we sat and waited for the show to begin, this little elf walked up to us like, hey, do, do you guys want to be a part of the show? Yeah, let, let's uh, do it. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll do it. And once the show began, they called me and my brother up to the stage and asked us a very simple question. So, uh, what do you guys want for Christmas? Oh, I want a Minecraft sword and a creeper stuffy. And, uh, what about you, little man? And as I looked into that crowd with dead silence, my brain stopped braining, bro. Hey, uh, don't worry, it can be anything. Um, ah, uh, shit. Uh, I want, um, um, just kid, what do you want? I want, uh, man, I, I just, I, 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 I wanna... Stage, I don't really know bozo. what I want. Yo, who brought this fucking dumbass on stage, bro? Get the fuck out of here. Now, now I'm paraphrasing. I mean, I was six. I don't remember exactly what he said, but that's what it felt like. And as we walked back to our seats, I was super embarrassed. But as the show started, it was actually pretty funny, and people had probably forgot about it by now. But ten minutes into the show, a character walks on stage with some goofy-ass buck teeth. Yo, this guy looks stupid as hell <laughs> oh shit and this dude proceeds to absolutely cook six-year-old me with no remorse hey what's your name um uh, I, I don't know what uh, okay uh, how's your day D day D day w what the fuck is a day i, I don't know what well, well, what do you know no no, that's just it. I don't know. I, I just don't know. Shit, I don't think I know anything. And that shit had the whole audience laughing harder than ever. And as I looked around, my brother was laughing and even my mom was laughing. And it was this very moment that I had hit rock bottom. And at the age of six, I realized I would be put on this earth simply to suffer and and it made me cry, bro. I cried in the middle of this theater.
Then the next morning I woke up and it was Christmas. And under the Christmas tree, I saw the best gift of all. It was a Bob Pocket tee from Chains Club Doll Shop. That's right, it's brand new. You could wear it around your homies. You could wear it at school. You could wear it around your mom, your grandma, your great grandma, maybe not your great grandma, but damn near anywhere else. And Bob will be posted in your pocket the whole time. Wow, what a perfect thing to get someone for Christmas, am I right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I I'm right. High school bathrooms have to be one of the most unorthodox places in the entire world. Walking into the bathroom, you have absolutely no clue what to expect. And honestly, that's the best part. I remember one time I had walked into the bathroom, you know, to, to take a piss. And when I had opened the door, I was not surprised to see some motherfucker getting his head shaved bald. And these dudes were so casual about it too. Yo, what's up? What up? <clears throat> And you know, it's cool and all to be able to be entertained while you're trying to release your bodily fluids. But I mean, sometimes you just want some peace and quiet because you truly never know when something like this can happen to you. And that is precisely why I'm scared to ever shit in the school bathroom. And listen, my school bathroom has always been bad, but these TikTok trends that keep popping up made the bathroom situation so much worse. Yo, look at this TikTok. <laughs> that's that's kind of funny. Run week later. Damn, someone took the soap dispensers. Who snatched the blow dryers, bruh? Where the fuck did the urinals go? One hour later. Hold up. Who hit a lick on the bathroom? These TikToks had the school announcements like, Guys, I'm begging you. Stop with the devious licks. If you see anyone hitting a devious lick in the bathroom, report it to the office immediately. And I'm not gonna lie, this trend was low-key pointless. Like, once you go home, what the fuck are you gonna do with the broken blow dryer, bruh? But there was one TikTok bathroom trend that was fire. So, what is the square root of pi? Uh, chains. Oh uh, yeah, can I go to the bathroom? Uh, be quick. <whistles> Am I tripping or did I just hear- <laughs> Yeah, bro. Bathroom functions are a 10 out of 10 TikTok trend. Hey, man, if you're still in high school, I recommend trying it. Anyways, I've obviously never been in the girls' washroom before, but I'd be seeing way too many TikToks filmed in there. Like, is it just a normal thing for girls to go to the washroom while other girls are just in there hitting the renegade? Like, I wouldn't know, but that whole situation seems a little bit awkward to me. <laughs> Wait, renegade, 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 renegade. And when it comes to most public schools, the washroom is like the black market of the school. So there's always some dude trying to sell you something. Yo, you need anything right now? I got that Gandalf OG, that Alaskan Thunder, some purple monkey balls, got those Girl Scout cookies. Hey man, just give me a second. I'm kind of busy right now. I got that Sour Diesel, that Granddaddy Purple Deluxe. Trust me, this stuff will blow your socks off. And every once in a while, someone will bring boxing gloves. All of a sudden, the school bathroom turns into the octagon. People are getting knocked out, dropped, and getting hit with the guillotine chokehold. But as soon as a teacher walks in... Hello class, I'm Mr. Subinson. I'll be your sub for today. Uh, for rules, I don't want to see any horseplay, no phones, and no WWE wrestling moves off the top of the desk, alright? Walking into class and then seeing a substitute teacher is like the same feeling as squaring up to fight a dude. And then finding out that dude's blind, bro. Like, you pretty much just gotta show up. And you win. Like, I honestly feel bad for these substitutes, bro, because every day they have no clue what they're showing up to. Like, one day they're walking into a class full of angels, and the next day they're fighting for their life in a class of straight demons, bro. I mean, being a substitute teacher is all about confidence. Like, the moment the sub walks into the class, they're being analyzed. Like, the way they walk, how they dress, and especially how they talk. Yo, if the first thing they say sounds like, <clears throat> uh, hey, hi guys. It's raps. It's raps, bro. If you 
start the class sounding like an intro to an eight-year-old's Minecraft Let's Play. Paper's gonna be thrown, pencils are gonna be thrown, fucking dudes are gonna be thrown. Like, it's gonna be straight anarchy, bro. But when the sub walks in the room with a little pep in his step, a little drip in his fit, and most importantly, he starts the class sounding like he's done this shit before. Hey guys, uh, I'm Mr. Peppinson, and uh, today we mean business. All of a sudden, people are listening. Everyone except for one man. The class clown. He's gonna see that confidence as a challenge, and bro's gonna start testing the waters to see if this sub is really about it. And that is how Y equals MC squared. Any questions? Yeah, uh, blue hat. Yeah, uh, Mr. Peppinson, wh why are you built like that? Oh, you mean built like the rock? Yeah, these are these are called muscles. Um, you'll learn about them when you hit puberty. B but bro, I I'm in grade 11. I I've already hit puberty. Yeah, nah. That that that's not what your peach fuzz mustache is telling me, buddy. Uh, okay, well, your hairline is telling me it's going on a vacation, bro. Uh, all right, let's see your shit then. Uh, yeah, yeah, like, it's not bad. Like, some substitutes are so good, you just wish they were your real teacher. Like, I remember one time in grade 10, I had this math class with one of those teachers who used to yap the whole time and then assign a bunch of homework with five minutes left in class. And then one day... A go walked into our class. A go who went by the name of Mr. G, or more formally, G Dog. Now, G Dog was packing a mean 68 years in his lifespan. However, he had the utmost pep in his step, paired with the drippiest of fits. And he was the type of dude who would lay down some respectable rules, and if anyone broke them, he wouldn't get mad. He would just simply flame the living shit out of you in front of everybody. And that's how you calculate the surface area. Area of oh oh uh no no text while I'm talking please I'm just texting my mom oh wow that's uh that's crazy uh how how's she doing Psh, wouldn't you like to know <laughs> oh yeah I mean I I would actually cause uh she's probably pretty tired after last night I mean I did lay down some mean. But there are definitely some questionable substitutes out there. I remember when I was in grade 6, my entire middle school was just weird, bro. My recess was called Nut Break, my music teacher was deaf, and our principal was damn near bipolar. Alright, who told the blind kid he could say the n-word? Okay, alright, it was me, but like, I didn't think he would actually say it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, that's, a, that's actually a pretty good one. I mean, I, I gotta give it to you, kid. <laughs> uh, wait, wait, wait. So, so you're not uh, mad? No, no, I'm fucking furious, okay? Get in my office right now. Okay, wait, I, I thought you were just laughing. What's going on right now? <laughs> Yo, I'm just messing with you, kid. You're good to go. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, thank you. Oh, uh, thank you. Good to go out of the school because you're expelled. That is absolutely unacceptable. <laughs> uh, are, are you joking? or Does it sound like I'm joking? I, I, yeah, kind of. Yeah, bro, my middle school was weird as hell, so I can't say I was surprised when a substitute teacher walks into my class talking about, Uh, hello, class. Uh, I'm Mrs. Hutchinson, and uh, I identify as a mermaid. And I'm only 12 years old, so I'm like, dog. What the actual fuck does identify me? But bless Miss Hutchinson's heart, man, cause Lord knows middle schoolers weren't gonna take that shit seriously. <laughs> oh, she's funny, oh, mermaid. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 class. Uh, I'm serious. Oh, so so that's why you smell like the ocean. Exactly. Wait, 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 no, wait, wait, what? And I remember one time this sub walked into our class and I could have swore they just found this motherfucker on the side of the street, bro. He walked in sagging like crazy and if he even went to school, this motherfucker most definitely cheated his way through, bro. Uh, yo, hey class. Uh, so, uh, like, what are we doing today? I, I mean, shit, uh, you're, you're the teacher. Oh, uh, yeah, right. Um, so, w what'd you guys learn about yesterday? Uh, we, we were learning about agriculture. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I think you're right, too, because, you know, the culture we live in right now is very angry. And um, the anger culture just needs to, like, like take a chill pill. You know what I'm saying? Um, any questions about that? Uh, yeah, um, what's a chill pill? Oh, yup, I'm glad you asked. Okay, see, I actually know a guy who can hook you up with some. Just, just meet me in the parking lot at lunch. Uh, Mr. Sagginson, are, are you trying to sell us drugs right now? Oh, no, 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 no. I, I, 
Well, I mean, yeah, but but it's for chemistry with neuroscience or I mean, I mean, like for microbiology or, or something like that. And these substitute teachers seem to butcher every single name on the attendance. I mean, shit's got to be on purpose at this point. Like, uh, hello, class. Uh, I'm just going to do some attendance really quick. Uh, correct me if I get your name wrong. OK, um, uh, Horda Hansa is uh, is Horda Hansa here? OK, uh, I mean, my name's Jordan Johnson. Well, you're absent now, so you gotta speak up sooner next time. Wait, what the fuck? Maya? Is, is Maya present? Uh, it's, it's Mia. Wow, <laughs> quite the name you got there. It's spelled kind of weird, no? No, it's not. It's literally three letters. Ariana? Is Ariana here? Um, s sorry, it's Ariana. Okay, and? Like, like what's your point? Well, I, th th that's just how it's pronounced. Uh, Juwan? Is there Juwan in the room? It's Juan. No, it's Juan. And some subs be walking into your class with the most bullshit rules ever. Like, uh, hey, Mr. Subinson, uh, can I go to the washroom? Uh, does your teacher usually let you go to the washroom? Uh, I mean, I mean, yeah, I think you legally have to. Oh, bu 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 bu. Uh, I don't believe it. Uh, sit your ass down and get to work. Uh, wait, Mr. Subinson. Uh, respectfully, I'm about to shit my pants here. Uh, well, wait, does your teacher usually let you do that? What, shit my pants? Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right, I'll allow it. Hey, what the yo. fuck is this guy? And I feel like there's no greater sense of community among a class than when a substitute teacher comes in. The entire class just comes together to gaslight the fuck out of this poor substitute. I remember one time in grade 10, me and my homie had a sub come in who was giving us this multiple choice test. And my homie was the type of dude who'd be getting zero percents on everything. And the way his grades were looking, he just couldn't afford to fail another test. So what he did, I just need to preface, I do not condone. But from the moment the teacher walked in, he acted like he he needed a little extra help. You know what I'm saying? And to be honest, he put on a spectacular performance. I mean, someone either needs to get this man an Oscar or a diagnosis, bro. And I just acted normal, but I guess by proxy, I got a little extra help. And I don't know what that says about me, but I do know what it means. It means the substitute teacher walked out of that class happy she was able to help two students in need. And it also means me and my homie both walked out of that class with 100% on our tests. Bad haircuts. There is nothing worse than when your barber just randomly decides to destroy your self-confidence with some goofy ass haircut. And as someone who has never found a barber who consistently does me nicely, I have gotten my shit all the way fucked up on many occasions. I'm talking not going to school, locking myself in my room so nobody can see me with this disgraceful cut type of fucked up. And these barbers are out here having the audacity to ask, do you like it? Man, do I like it? Yeah, yeah, bro. I, I love it, bro. <laughs> Thank you so much. Man, I'd just be wiping the tears away and then tipping them nicely. Knowing damn well I should be out here throwing hands, because this dude is the reason I can't get any bitches. So I've tried lots of different barbers in my time, starting with the ones my mom used to take me to. I mean, this early, I never really even had a say on what I wanted my hair to look like. So uh, what are you looking for today? Uh, You know, just a little bit off the top, please. Shave it. Wait, wait, what? Shave it. Your new haircut looks so good, buddy. <laughs> Thanks. Hey man, you know your haircut is ass when your mom says she likes it. As a kid, I always dreaded getting haircuts because I knew my barber was already like 0 for 10. And I would show up to school every time knowing it was inevitable that I was about to get my shit flamed. And truthfully, there is no worse roasting than when you get a bad haircut. Like people you barely even know will be out here cooking you. Who the fuck is this? All of a sudden, people got more jokes than Chris Rock. And it's even worse when you decide, I should get a fresh cut because school's starting back up and I'm trying to look fresh. Bro, I can't go to school like this. Yo, Chains, what's up? Yo, what's good? Bro, bro, are you all right? Why do you, why do you got this hoodie on? Yeah, yeah, I'm chilling. I'm, I'm just kind of cold, you know? Bro, it's 32 degrees. And man, there was this one time that I still think about every time I fall asleep. Me and my friend go to this barbershop that I'd been to once before. And last time, they did me quite nicely. So we head in. I sit down in the chair. Hey, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Uh, have you been here before? Yeah, yeah, I have actually. Oh, I remember you. Same cut as last time? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So what's new, man? Uh, nothing much, really. What about you? You know, I I've just been working. Oh, yeah, re respect, respect. So, uh, how's your dad doing? This is when I knew something was terribly wrong. Bro, I don't got a dad. Oh, Fuck! <laughs>
you, you know, he he's good. This motherfucker was giving me some random kid's haircut. This dude must have thought I was Manny or some shit. Because he gave me that middle part cut. And he pushed my hairline back a little bit. And everyone in my city knew this barber. So everyone at my school followed his Instagram too. Can I can I get a picture from my Instagram? Nah, bro. I don't I don't really like being posted. Don't don't worry, it's quick, it's quick. Nah, I don't really want to. This dude caught me lacking so bad and broadcasted it to everyone in my city. Fuck bro, I should throw hands with him right now. I gotta get it back in blood. So do you like the cut? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I do. <laughs> And when I checked my Instagram, I was out here getting flamed so hard. Borderline cyberbullying. And I'm not joking when I say this. This motherfucker fucked me up so bad. I learned how to cut my own hair and never went back to a barber ever again.